Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of morning restorative this morning um, because my back still isn't brilliant and um, and I didn't sleep very well either. So a, co um, a couple of people are really sleepy this morning as well. So this is a re just a really nice way of, um, of re uh, reviving yourself from um, you know just having uh, you know just having poor sleep. And it's really good that way of um, helping yourself um, release from release tension from um, your lower back. So we're just going to start off um, up in our basic relaxation pose. So we're not going to stay. Often we will stay in the basic relaxation pose for you know half an hour, but we're not going to stay there for this for that long um, this morning um, so otherwise you won't get through the entire sequence so we're just gonna just bring ourselves into basic relaxation just to start off with so you've got a blanket underneath your head you've got a bolster underneath your knees uh, Mike I don't think your microphone's on but um okay, yeah. So the bolster, um, that's better. Can you hear me now? Yeah, good. So the you got the blanket underneath your head, just supporting the back of your neck. You've got the bolster underneath your knees, and then the blocks underneath your feet. Just get everything into a position that you know that you're going to be able to stay in. Another really beneficial thing for restorative yoga. So restorative yoga, we really benefit from restorative yoga because it brings quietness and it allows us to stretch ourselves out but what we really need we need comfort so an extra blanket on top of our um, normal mat is good don't worry if you haven't got one we need um, blocks and equipment but also a bit of darkness is helpful warmth is the second priority darkness is the first so if you can cover your eyes with something like an eye pillow or even just a flannel or just something that can block the light out that's helpful it doesn't matter too much if you can't do that but it's helpful so warmth so have a blanket to cover yourself over if you need it warmth comfort and darkness three, three kind of principal priorities of the practice. So if you're not comfortable, then get yourself comfortable. Just don't feel like you have to suffer in one position. Just give yourself some comfort. Adjust until you feel comfortable. The other big difference between restorative yoga and our typical morning yoga is that I'll speak less because the practice is about relaxation and extension through relaxation. So in order to relax, you need to be able to switch off your ears to a degree so you're not spending the entire time listening engaging the brain so i'll speak less just get you into position i'll just speak you into the talk you through the initial relaxation and then I'll just talk you around the individual poses. So if there are long periods of silence, don't assume that the internet has gone off. Just trust that I'll come back. Obviously, if you've been there for an hour, then maybe the internet has gone off. But Just listen to your breath. If 
observe how the body connects to the ground. Observe where the skin makes contact with the floor and with the equipment. Soften your jaw, soften your tongue, soften the eyeballs in the sockets. Draw your attention into the soles of your feet. So that the soles of the feet tingle with consciousness. Consciously observing the feeling of the skin. Of the flesh and of the muscle. And then consciously relax the sole of the foot. Let go of any tension, release the bone, relax the muscle, relax the flesh and relax the skin. Draw your attention to the top of the foot. So the skin tingles with consciousness on the top of the foot. Consciously relax the bone, relaxing the bones and the flesh and the muscle and the skin at the top of the foot. Draw your attention into your calf muscles and the shins. So the skin of the shins tingles with consciousness. And then allow the shin bone to sink into the, the bed of the calf muscle. Relaxing the calf muscle. Relaxing the flesh and the skin. Draw your attention into the kneecaps and into the thighs. Again, so that they tingle with consciousness. And release the Thigh muscle and the flesh and the skin, relaxing the muscle and the skin and the bone, relaxing the femur bone in the hip joint, 
from the knee to the hip. Draw your attention into your pelvis and your abdomen and into your upper chest. So the skin of the pelvis and the abdomen and the upper chest tingles with consciousness. And then relax the muscles and the bones and the flesh and the organs and the skin. Relaxing the organic body. Become conscious of your arms in contact with the floor, drawing your consciousness into the upper arms and the shoulders, and the elbows and the forearms and the wrists, and the palms of the hands and the fingers, and the backs of the hands. And then from the shoulders to the elbows, to the wrists, to the fingertips, release the bones and the muscle. Release the muscle and the bones. Release the flesh and the skin. Drawing your attention into your neck and into your head. Drawing your attention inward so that the skin of the neck and the head tingles with consciousness. And consciously relax the muscles around the neck and around the face. skin. And then observe how you can breathe deeply and freely and the muscles around the chest, around the body are relaxed. But maintaining softness in the muscles around the lungs, around the chest, maintaining that gentleness.
just allowing the body to float. Allowing the body to release into the floor. Breathe evenly into both lungs. Observe that as the muscles relax around the chest, that there's no resistance to the in-breath. A non-resistant breath brings in more energy. Observe how a non-resistant breath expands the chest, stretching out those relaxed muscles just a little as you inhale. As you exhale, how the chest lowers, how the muscles around the ribs relax even more. Breathe evenly into both lungs. Breathe evenly out of both lungs. Okay, when you're ready, just wriggle your toes, wriggle your fingers. And then just bend your knees, bring your feet onto the bolster for a moment with the feet together, the knees apart. And just stay down in this position with the knees together with the feet apart the feet slightly elevated so that you release into the back
and relax. So the knees together, the feet apart, just relax back into the floor. So again, I'll speak less as we progress into the sequence. So don't assume that silence is an error with your intellect action. This pose just allows the back to sink into the floor without any tension. Okay, when you're ready, just draw your knees in towards your chest and then have a little rock from side to side, from top to bottom. And then roll onto your right side and then straighten out the top leg, come back up into a seated position. And then just come into cross legs for a moment. And just observe your energy. Observe how your energy has changed. How the lightness of energy has replaced that tired, bewildered energy that we started with. Okay, so we're going to do um, a side lying stretch. So it's really simple. So get yourself so you don't need the blocks for your feet. We're just going to have a bolster, or you can use cushions or a folded blanket. Have enough room so that you can stretch out. You're just going to come down onto your right hip. 
and then just stretch the arms out and stretch the legs out. So try not to roll onto your front. You're just resting on your hip, just around the hip and the abdomen region. So you just stretch yourself out. So there's some element of extension within this pose, but it still remains gentle. So we're not stretching like we would stretch in our typical Iyengar based practice. It, we would just, we just let gravity do most of the work, but still stretch out a little. If it's uncomfortable to keep the top foot on top of the bottom foot, then you can just let that foot come forwards or back just wherever it feels comfortable. At any stage, these poses feel too much, then adjust so that it feels like you can stay. So let go of the legs a little, let go of the arms a little, just let gravity do the work. Or come out of the pose altogether if it's really not right for you. Can go back into the previous pose if this pose doesn't feel good. So we're not going to stay in this position for very long, just a minute or so. We'll do the other side. Breathe evenly into both lungs. Breathe evenly out of both lungs. And then to come out of the pose, just roll onto your front bend, your knees, just come up onto all fours. Just sit back on your heels for a moment. Again, just observing your energy. And then Bring the left hip onto the bolster and then stretch yourself out to the side lying stretch on the other side. Try and make sure that you're in a good straight line. So the bolster is in the hip area around the, just the, the side abdomen a little. And just stretch yourself out. If you feel like you're not in the right position, then just adjust until you are. Stretching out your arms, stretching out your legs. Just letting gravity do most of the work.
So it might feel different on one side than the other. It's just something to observe. Remember, if it doesn't feel good, if it feels painful or difficult to hold, then just release a little. And you can go back to the previous pose on your back. Your feet apart, knees together, the feet on the bolster. So as you stay and remain in the pose, perhaps you start to feel that feeling of energy that fills the limbs. Just that subtle action. Fills the limbs with positive consciousness. And then when you're ready, just roll onto your front. Push yourself up into a seated position, just sitting back on your heel. Lifting up into the chest. Just observe that profound difference in your energy. So although these poses require very little energy to complete the energy that we release as a result is profound. So we're going to go into the supported restorative pigeon pose. So ideally you need two um, bolsters for this, one for your hips and then one for your body. If you haven't got two um, bolsters, then just pile up some blankets or some cushions for your, for your torso. So have the bolster for your hips and then pile up some additional cushions so you've got just a little bit of height from the floor for the torso. And then you come up onto your knees, bring your right foot forward, and then you walk that right foot over to the left side. And then bring that right knee down onto the floor on the right side, so that the foot is basically crossing over onto the, right, onto the left side of the body. And then lift up into the chest, and then guide yourself down along the bolster and then rest your head on one on the same side as your um as your as your bent knee is pointing in so onto the right side and then release so you've got some lifts underneath the chest even if it's just small lifts Alternatively, you can use the cushions for underneath your hips and your um, and your bolster for your torso. So just find a position that feels comfortable. And then just release into the floor.
just consciously breathing into the back chest. So keeping the, keeping the chest soft in a muscular perspective, from a muscular perspective. And just breathing into the back chest. So you often breathe into the front chest, but not the back chest. So feel the back of the lungs. So you feel the back expanding with your breath. Just observing how the back adjusts into the position. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders and then lift yourself up. And then walk the back leg in so that you just straddle the bolster that your torso was resting on. Just lifting up into the chest or the cushions that you were sitting on. Just observing your energy. And then just reset and then we'll do the other side so sitting behind the front bolster or alternatively you can use this bolster you can put cushions underneath your hips and then use this bolster for your torso so come up onto your knees bring your left foot forwards in front of the in between the two bolsters walk that left foot over to the right side bring that left knee down onto the floor Just lift the chest as you extend the body forwards, rest your elbows on the floor, either side of the hip, either side of the shoulders, and then let the body release into the floor.
Okay, and then bring your hands underneath your shoulders, push yourself up into a seated position, bring the back leg forwards, just to straddle the bolster, the torso bolster, all the cushions, and just observe your energy. And then we're just going to come into a version of Supta Virasana. So you might want extra height for Supta Virasana. So you can have two bolsters, one on top of the other, or you can put um, blocks underneath your bolster just so that you've got some extra for your bolster. So Supta Varasana is often one of those poses that kind of causes some discomfort. But if you give yourself enough of a lift, have a blanket for your head, then it's actually incredibly comfortable. So just come onto all fours, have your knees together, have your feet apart, draw the backs of your calves away from the backs of the knees roll the calves out to the side and then just sit in front of the bolster if this is not possible then yep it's up to badakrasana is okay so bring your feet towards you just come down onto the bolster have the feet together the knees apart it's up to virasana it's up to badakrasana sorry but if you can come into Supta virasana Again, this is a really good one for just relieving tension in the back. So turn the tailbone up to the ceiling. Lengthen the seat bones down towards the backs of the knees. Broaden the pelvis, broaden and soften the abdomen, drawing the abdomen towards the spine. Let your arms rest on the floor. If you can cover your eyes, then do. So this is really not doable for you, even with extra height underneath you, then going to suck to Badakanasta. So you're sitting on the floor with the seat bones, the feet are close to the seat bones, the knees are falling apart. Allow yourself to release into the floor. Keeping the muscles around the chest and the arms and the torso and the pelvis and the legs as soft as your body will permit.
consciously soften the muscles of the legs. And now you get the biggest stretch here. See if you can consciously draw softness into the thighs, into the quads. Using the breath to distribute that softness. Okay, and then just gently push your elbows into the floor and then come up with your chest rather than poking your head forwards to come up into seated Virasana and then just sit directly on the floor and then gently stretch your legs out. Just sit with this legs outstretched for a moment. And then just move bolster out of the way, have a blanket from underneath your head. Just use a bolster from underneath your knees just to release just for the last shavasana. So you've got bolster underneath your knees. got a blanket underneath your the back of your neck and your head and then just allow yourself to release into the floor just observing your energy maybe your energy feels focused around the thighs after the stretch, then that's up to Badakanasana pose. So use your in breath and your out breath to distribute that feeling of lightness evenly throughout the body down into the tips of the toes, the tips of the fingers, the top of the head.
basking in that feeling of lightness and positive energy. And then when you're ready to disturb yourself, just wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. Just bringing yourself back into this pose of Shavasana. And then bend your knees, bring your feet onto the bolster. Just have the feet apart, the knees together, just for a moment. Just rest in your back into the floor. And then draw your knees in towards your chest. Just have a little rock from top to bottom, from side to side, just easing out any tension on your back. And then roll onto your right side. Just stay down for a breath or two. And then straightening out the top leg, come back up into a seated position, just a final cross legs with your hands in the masti, just a final spinal lift, drawing your breath in through your nose and down into the abdomen. Be conscious of the energy that you have released through your gentle practice. So the practice is gentle, but the energy that you release is profound. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Spend a moment to seek to acknowledge that positive energy you have created inside and then radiate some of that positive energy out into the world. And then release the backs of your hands down towards your knees, palms facing upwards. And as you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. So hopefully you feel as though you've just stretched yourself out really gently but giving yourself lots of good positive energy at the same time so thank you very much for joining us